Um, okay, first of all, when you first walked in, we were recording, but then it wasn't recording. But can you tell me again what you said my podcast reminds you of? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so your podcast reminds me of Call Her Daddy. And I died. If the <laughs> if the reaction was genuine, it's not. I think it was on video, not on audio. I died. Yeah. That is such a <laughs> it, it, I love it. It just feels so real and so just like talking about life and everything. I've done several podcasts and I love them. Um, but whenever I see your podcast, I just feel, you know, what? I feel like it's a safe space for women. I think that's the kind of feeling that I was, I was, which I'm not saying the other ones weren't. Yeah. Uh, but most of them have been more like business, professional. And this one is just like, it's pink, it's girly, it's safe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm so happy you feel that way. And I'm, I'm happy that you obviously enjoy as a listener and then also wanted to be on the fact that you love podcasts and then you also want to be on the pot on mine to kind of share more about <laughs> you is is exciting so thank you so much miriam valencia welcome to adultish wines thank you thank you for having me <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> thanks for coming where do you live close by so i live closer to like the humble area oh my god like, far a little bit um you know what i got used to driving crazy hours so okay. anything under an hour to me is not far okay because as a realtor you drive so much so i'm like oh yeah i can do the drive yeah okay that's true that's how i feel being from la oh. i am from los angeles originally so i'm always like i mean i'll drive whatever hour hour and a half that means nothing to me yeah because you know? you're so used to it too i'm so used to it oh when did you move here three years ago what made you move here Honestly, it was COVID. Um, I was out of an apartment lease. Why not? I had been here before. I had friends just visited. Like, why the heck not? Just try something new. And you moved here by yourself? Uh, one of my friends had moved here two months prior. And then one of my friends is married to someone who's from here. So she was here. She'd been here for a couple of years. And yeah, just I had lived in Southern California for the majority of my life and was like, why the hell not? So most of Houstonians don't like me, you know, but you as a realtor... <laughs> I do. You yeah. like <laughs> We love everyone coming to move to Houston. By all means, move over here. <laughs> I know. That's kind of like the common theme that I hear from people. They're like, as a realtor, they're like, no, come, please. Yeah. God, love that. Um, okay. So you're the owner of Alumbra Properties. Yes. Which is a brokerage company. Yes. It's a real estate company. Okay. And you're going to need to explain to me and the winers. I don't know. I came from LA, like real estate. It seems different out here. I don't know how to explain it, but real estate out here is like there's a lot of y'all. Yes. Like <laughs> and like to get an apartment even like I used a real estate agent to get this apartment and I don't think I would have done that in L.A. Like I would have just walked around, called the number and gotten one like they just don't exist for, I guess, I don't know, smaller projects like this or something like that. Okay. But I do feel like you all are out here a plenty. So what is the difference between a brokerage and real estate to start with? Um, so a real estate agent, you do help clients, residential, commercial, uh, apartment leases, residential leases, so many umbrellas under that. Um, but a broker, you hold the real estate agent's license, you sponsor them so that they can sell and you can still also sell yourself. Oh, okay. Okay. So you so you can sell yourself, mm -hmm. but you're kind of managing or maybe you're just kind of like a house, a little home base for the real estate yes. agents. Yeah. And they're 1099. So they can sell, not sell as they please. Okay. And they're not employees. So you can't technically pay them a salary, but you don't. They get paid only from commission, um, which is I don't know how it works in L.A. on that part, but that's probably why you see a lot of hustlers here <laughs> like yeah they're gonna sell you or help you rent hustlers anything they're just working nonstop. and we do have some great real estate agents here in houston yeah is it anything like is real estate anything like selling sunset on <laughs> you know what <laughs> i've TV. never watched a full season and i have my own real estate agents and they tell me all the time like miriam you need to watch it miriam you gotta start watching this show and i need to watch it because i want to be able to connect with them on that level and and let them know like oh yeah i think there's someone named christine yeah like i like her i don't like her like, i don't know i need to okay watch but it. it's very bougie it's very like i mean y'all are I mean, I get it. You're selling the house, but you're also selling yourself. Like someone's yeah. going to want to work with you and what you present. Yes. It's like we're our own brand. And I, I just taught them a class on branding yourself. And it was like you can be two brands. You can be like a Nike. You don't know who the owner is, but you know the brand Nike. Yeah. Or you can be like Kim Kardashian. We know who Kim Kardashian is. She has skims. She has all of these businesses, 
But you know Kim Kardashian. A hundred percent. We want to be Kim Kardashian. You definitely do because she was just <laughs> GQ man of the year. I love that for her. I How cool is that? <laughs> I was. know that there's Kardashian haters out there. And honestly, you guys are just haters. <laughs> they're brilliant. The, I get it. Like Their business. Their business. And yeah. sure, everyone has their like bad things about them as an individual for sure and maybe they're a little shady but like they are in that life <laughs> and they i mean you know no i agree who, who no, knows i, I don't agree. know them personally but like look what they're doing yeah they're building they're building an empire and they have from the start especially kim um you know yeah. she's just kept building on everything that she has and she gets people to work with her and collaborate with her and regardless of what people say of her she just keeps on moving on up and keeps building what she has already and i to me that's so admirable it's like wow and she's a woman. admirable inspirational and she's a woman mm-hmm. get it kim i know <laughs> so what um how long have you owned lumber properties we have two months oh okay brand new, so brand new. oh my god what made you make the leap from were you just a real estate not just that sounds terrible were you <laughs> were you only doing real estate how does that work yeah so I were was you a real estate a, agent yeah and then was like i'm gonna be a boss bitch yeah. <laughs> so i have been planning it for a little over a year to open up my own brokerage. Okay. There were a lot of circumstances that I went through uh, when I was a real estate agent. I realized there were a lot of things I wanted to do different. Um, and, you know, I just figured I might as well just open up my own brokerage and do it differently there. And that's exactly what I did. I planned it. I structured it. And now just two months in, I have 20 agents. We've closed, I think, over 20 houses now. We have 20 four listings if i'm not mistaken wow it's growing pretty fast but it's still very manageable because i prepare for it so much oh my gosh congratulations thank you that's good and i get to sit here and have wine i know (laughs) cheers actually we didn't do that cheers you're welcome um so 20 agents again i have no idea that works is that a good amount for a starting yeah i mean it sounds like a lot like it is um I use my psychology degree a lot when it comes to managing my agents because it's really just like being a manager, an owner. Like, how do you interact with your agents? How do you teach them, mentor them as a leader? Really just kind of identifying myself, what kind of leader do I want to be? And that's what I guide myself on so that I I can truly be a good broker. Do you get um, commission from them? Okay, so it's beneficial for you, obviously, To have people selling under you, under your um, business. Yeah. So every time they close, they get 80% of the commission and I get 20%. Okay. Um, So they get the majority of the cut. And then at a certain point, once they reach like 20K, which is their cap, Uh they get 100% of their commission. Wow. So it benefits them a lot to be on a cap brokerage because they do get to take home 100% of their sales. Interesting. Okay, and it benefits you to retain employees and be a good yes. manager or boss or home. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I want to be. I just want to be a good leader, a good broker for them. And wow. it's it's come with these challenges of getting here. Um, real estate is not easy. I mean, I know every industry has like its dark moments, but I think those dark moments is what defines why I want to be such a good leader. Yeah, what are the, some of those dark moments? Like, do you feel like... And you mentioned already that you kind of felt there were some things in real estate that you wanted to change, which is why you wanted to open your own company. Yeah. So some of them was, I hope a lot of the Hispanic community. Okay. uh, Some of it was seeing just a lot of Spanish speaking families being taken advantage of because they didn't know Spanish. Um, I'm first generation. Spanish speaking is my first language. Um, And oftentimes I did see them struggling without getting the proper care. Uh, that was one of mm. them. As a real estate agent, I felt like I needed to create my own resources. I needed to find ways to market myself or the people that I was trying to help. Um, and nothing against the brokerages that I was with, but it was just not in their yeah, priority or maybe. Yeah, you just kind of saw holes that needed to be filled. Yeah. So that was one. And another one was just a lot of leadership. Um, again, there were just things that I would have done differently the way that I would mentor and talk to people and and lead an agent. And that's really where I stepped up and said, you know, I, I'm going to do it myself if someone else can't. Yeah. 
And then you just won. Let's see if I can say it again. Um, in October, the National Associ- the National Association of Real Estate Professionals. No, I messed up. You almost had it. <laughs> you almost had it. National Hispanic Association. <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> um, the National Association of Hispanic Real Estate Professionals. Yes, <laughs> influence her award. Influence yes, her award. Of the year. So, what does that mean? Like, they recognized everything that you were doing for Hispanic communities, basically? Yes, they did. And it, it was so... I'm not going to get emotional. No, get it. emotional. <laughs> it was just so... Being up there in the stage, and I was not expecting to win the award. Um, I was not even expected to be nominated. When I got the email, my mom was in a hospital. She was struggling with liver problems that she was had. So I was in the ceremony, and I was in and out of the ceremony because my dad was in the hospital, and I was really the one who was kind of hands-on and has my mom and asking all these questions and just advocating because you know, I feel like women and doctors, we don't get taken seriously enough. It's like our pain levels are like, oh, you're okay. Right. Oh, it's not that bad. So I was just being a huge advocate for my mom. Yeah. So I was FaceTiming my dad the entire time, and then they called me up there, and they're like, oh, Miriam, you won the award, and... I was so, so you didn't even know until they called you up that you won. Sometimes they prepare the person, but you didn't yeah, know. Yeah, no, I didn't know until they called me there. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and just it was such a beautiful feeling to Yeah, know to be that. recognized. Yeah. Wow. And so somebody, did somebody have to nominate you for that or? Yes. I, um, they had open nominations for it. And wow. they said I was nominated. That's <laughs> really good to like have this feeling of like being seen. Yeah. Kind of. It is. From your community and also your peers? It, it is. And I think more so because it was a really hard year. Um, and seeing that everything just comes to light. Mm-hmm. There's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And I, I really am seeing that now. And I just feel like life is so beautiful. And Aww. even more so because of everything that happened. Yeah. A hard year for you professionally or personally? Both. Both, both yeah. Can you share a little bit about that? <laughs> Just uh, some of the yeah. things that kind of like made you, you know, that you're looking back on now and like, okay, we got this. Yeah. So, um, you know, real estate is very difficult. Real estate, it's a difficult, it's very competitive because it sells naturally. Mm-hmm. It's going to be kind of like a shark eat shark world. Now I think we're seeing a different transformation between brokerages and realtors of it being more collaborated versus competitiveness which is amazing to see people work together in order to grow and i think people are starting to realize like why are we going to fight each other we're both trying to close the sale yeah we're there's room for everyone people. at the table there is there is and there's room for women at the table yes and i think for me that's my biggest thing i hear a lot of woman empowerment but i don't see a lot mm. of it and that for me irks me because it's like you cannot say it and not act upon it. Yeah. So back it up. Yeah. And I think that's where I'm really just trying to focus and stay focused on what difference am I trying to make? Who am I trying to be? And what am I trying to get away from and not become a certain person that I don't ever want to be? Yeah. Do you ever feel yourself like looking on social media? I could just slack off a little bit and <laughs> I don't know, maybe go that because you have a large following on on Instagram. And obviously, like you, you've you only had your company for two months, but you have 20 agents. You know what I mean? Like you could kind of relax, a relax little maybe bit. get a little comfortable <laughs> or maybe I don't know, just take the easy street a little bit. I can't. You don't. I can't. I mean. You know, you get those moments where you're like, oh, why couldn't I just be comfortable with where I was? Mm-hmm. Or I think about it too, like, oh, where before I started my brokerage, I could just go back to teaching. You know, and teaching okay. is still hard on its own. Like, yeah. to not discredit anyone. I mean, teaching is hard. Right. I did it for a year and I was like, I can't do okay. this. It's so difficult. But it was also like, you know, I could just do a nine to five and yeah. just be with my daughter and not worry about if I make a sale or worry about the person who may be saying things about me or anything like that. But I end, I ended up wanting to open my brokerage instead. And I knew what that came with. I knew that that would come with a lot of eyes and a lot of uh, tongues. And I decided to just, you know, I have a lot of faith in God. Okay. And I put my myself in God's hand. And that's what I did. And everything and anything that anyone says or does, I feel like it just kind of bounces off. It doesn't affect me anymore because I grew so much from everything that did affect me back then. Um, and now I'm just like, 
okay, you guys can watch. You guys can see and I will continue doing good and doing good will prevail. So the kind of resistance that you maybe are speaking of, like, is it people in the same industry that are kind of looking down on you or? or... It can be. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is your family and your friend group really supportive? They're of... so supportive. So I'm a single mom of a five-year-old girl okay. and I'm by myself. I know we talked a little bit about, like, yeah. um, I was in a relationship that ended seven months ago and I have been alone ever since. And okay. I told myself I was going to take a year of just being by myself, being no dating, texting, talking, celibacy, everything. It just, and now that the year is coming up, it just feels like it went so fast. And maybe another maybe year. Maybe another year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I thought about it. I was like, maybe I should do two years because this year is creeping up. I, obviously, no one's making me, right? But I'm like, yeah. I don't think a year is enough. <laughs> wow. Yeah. But, and what great timing for you to start your brokerage and whatnot. Oh, it was perfect. Essentially, I chose my career over a relationship. No, I didn't want to stop. Well, it sounds like you chose yourself. I did. I don't think you necessarily chose your career. It sounds like you chose yourself and your emotional well-being and mental well-being and your child. I did. You're right. I did choose myself. Yeah. I don't think it's you chose your career. You chose... What I wanted to do. I think you chose life. I did. I did. And I wanted to travel to Greece and I wanted to open my company. I wanted to do so many things. And I realized I just needed to do them alone. There's a saying in Spanish and it goes, mejor sola que mal acompañada. So like, better alone than with bad company. And I live by that saying. I do. I Can do. you say it again slower? Mm -hmm. <laughs> mejor sola que mal acompañada. Okay. I love that yeah. i have thought of something similar for the past maybe five or six years it's not a saying by any means but i say i would rather be i'm an aunt to like a million kids i have a lot of nieces and nephews and i oh. say i would rather be single auntie p for the rest of my life oh. than settle for yeah. anything you can't you I can. just and like I've seen some of my friends go through marriages and divorce and all that. And that's totally fine. Like, absolutely. But I've seen things that I love from my friends and family being in relationships. And I've seen things that I'm like, that's something I won't want to ever do or put up with or want. You know what I mean? Yeah. So and I, I'm, you know, listen, I'm not uh, I'm not saying shit will never go down because I'm sure it will. A hundred percent. But there's always. just things. Yeah, always. But yeah, I would rather just I mean. I would, I just, I'm never going to settle. No, and I don't think we have to. You know, I still, I still believe in love. Yeah. And I do think that there is someone out there who's going to put up with my very high maintenance <laughs> and a very high standard of respect and, and of course, supportive because I do have goals. So if I have someone tells me, you know, you have too many goals or why don't you slow down a little bit immediately, I'm going to be, well, why don't you step up with me instead. Right. You know, I'm trying to build myself. We can build each other and we can build something beautiful. You know, I think back, I mean, Beyonce and JC, right? Even though they did have like that little mishap once with Solange. But at the end of the day, they Becky did with build. the Becky with the good hair? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Becky with the good hair. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I just, they still built something. and and Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I actually was talking about them recently and I was saying like, Obviously, they went through something, and I'm sure they've been through 27,000 more things than have been leaked out to the media. I understand yeah. that. But at a certain point, at a position like they're in, they've obviously decided, sure, maybe they're in love, maybe they're not, but they've actually probably decided to make it a very business relationship. Like, oh, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, and oh, yeah. at a certain point, that's what a partnership is. In a marriage is like, I don't want to take the romance out of it, but um, I had Carolina on from the nightcap. Oh, I love her. I love her. And I love the nightcap. And of course, that's how we connected. Um, I think, right? Is that how you found me on? You know what? I think so. Probably. Maybe from Carol Carolina being on the pod. It may have been. May yeah. have been. But she was like talking about something and I was like, I'm a big prenup girl because yes. I, and I don't think that yes. kills romance. I'm oh. like. Why not? Why not just have it there? Like things happen, stuff goes wrong. You cheat, I cheat. I won't ever do that. But like, or we just decide we're not, you know, I don't know. It's just like, let's protect ourselves and be yeah. respectful and communicative. And we know what the end is. Like if, if there's going to be an end, great. It's here. Take that easy way out if you want to. 
Yeah, no, I agree. Especially like in real estate, you see so many scenarios oh, of I'm sure. divorce, you know, divorce that that go wrong and go sideways in so many different ways. And now you have the wife that's losing money or the wife that's losing all the house or the husband that maybe worked so hard for it and it just got taken away from him from one day to another. Um, so I completely agree on that. I've been married and I've been divorced. I was married for three years. Okay. That's where my daughter came from. Um, but I completely agree. And I don't know if I were to ever get married again, to tell you the truth. Really? I don't. And I people tell me like, well, the prenup and the prenup was like, I know, but maybe I just haven't, found that person that i would say i want to get married to this person again um but for me i i would be really okay with like a very long-term committed relationship and have a big ceremony like a wedding but not actually be married. but just have a party <laughs> i sound like a man right <laughs> <laughs> what is it like my long distance relationship girlfriend from uh barbie Oh, I haven't Did even you know? seen. I'm a terrible example of a woman. Oh my god! I haven't I'm even so seen Barbie. Here's the thing. <gasps> okay, wait. <laughs> okay, on. the thing is just when things get. This is like one of my toxic traits. I have two okay. toxic traits, <laughs> which aren't really toxic. They're funny more so. But one of my toxic traits is when something gets hyped up so much, like a TV show or a movie or something, I get really turned off about it, and I can't okay. go there yet. Okay. So I will watch Barbie. Yeah. 100%. But I've just been like, I, I don't know. I've just seen so much of it and so much talk and not about like disagreements or things like that, but people being like, oh, it's man hating. No, it's not. This and that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to give it a settle. There's to a lot of opinions. A lot of opinions, yeah. but I'm going to give it a second to settle and then I'm going to watch the movie and I'm going to enjoy it because it's been quiet for a minute. So for example, I used to work in the studios in LA mm -hmm. and I did, uh, have you seen Euphoria on HBO? I've seen clips of it. That's with um, Zendaya. Yes. Yeah. So I worked on season one and Ooh. loved and I watched it and I loved it after it was out. You know what I mean? I still haven't seen season two. I didn't even work on season two, but I just feel this like I, mean, I need to just like let it settle for a second. Okay. That makes <laughs> it's sense. It's kind of weird. Though. Okay. You will though. You know what? Oh yeah. I no, I will. Know. I don't know. I don't know how you're going to feel about Barbie. I will tell you the first time I watched it, there were a lot of things like I didn't like that. Okay. And then there were things that tugged at my heart. And I was like, oh, my God, I can relate. Really? Um. So at the end, I did like it. Okay. Um. I want to say I loved like 93% of the movie. Okay. I feel like I'm going to be able to, from a Hollywood perspective, working with these actors, I'll be able to be on that side of things. Like the hard work, that the hours sense. that they put into it. Like I'm going to enjoy it for sure. But also, I used to work in costumes, and so I am always – sometimes when I watch a movie for the first time, I'm not even watching the movie. I'm watching the costumes and, like, looking for mistakes that were made. <laughs> so you're thinking of behind the scenes. Oh, my God. Yeah, so that. it's just – it's kind of a it's curse. It's a different eye, though. It's, it's beautiful, though. You can see things that maybe, like, an ordinary person wouldn't see. Like, I would have never thought that. Oh, yeah. I'm constantly looking at, like – that cup was there. It wasn't there now. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, was that cup from um, Game oh, of Thrones? Oh, Game of Thrones. Oh, <laughs> God. <Starbucks> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nightmare. Did you fired, that fired, fired. You um, I wasn't watching Game of Thrones during the time. It was so hyped oh, up. I didn't was, watch it. it I was. didn't watch Game of Thrones till COVID. Oh, you know what? I haven't finished it. I mean, I know I mean, how it's it so ends good. because yeah. of the t TikTok. And everyone was so sad about or mad about how it ends. Yeah. But I see why. Anyway, yeah, I do love <laughs> I do love movies and TV and reality TV. I watch a lot of, but I'm just like, it's an escape for me. And sometimes it becomes not an escape if it's so talked about and buzzed about. I just need, I just need a second. Maybe just to get away from it for a little bit. Yeah. So I'll go, I'll, I will definitely go back to it. I'll like watch it at home when it comes out on Netflix or something. No. <laughs> it will eventually. I think it's still on movie theaters. It's Is okay. it still? I have no idea. Good God. I'm just throwing it out there. <laughs> It might be. No, yeah, it might be. Um, okay, gosh, where are we going with that? Okay, so yes, prenups. Yeah, prenups. <laughs> <laughs> Why did we get to Barbie? How did we get to Barbie from prenups? Okay, so you're not sure if you're going to be, be getting married again. Yeah, no, I don't think so. No, and I have my daughter too, so it's so yeah. different. You know, I don't just think about myself dating now. I think about if this person were to enter her life. 
how would this affect her? And she's getting older now, too. Um, and she's so funny, though, because my ex-husband has a girlfriend, and we love her. Her name yeah. is Leslie. And she's great to Evangeline. Uh, that's my daughter's oh name, Oh, my Evangeline. God. Beautiful, Evangeline. Thank you. I got that's that from Maggie McPhee when I was, like, 12 years old. I have old. seen that movie. You have? <laughs> yeah. Oh, so that's where I got it from. Oh, I remember seeing the movie, and then I read the book. And I just knew I was 12 years old and no idea what I was going to do in life or get married or anything. But I was like, I just know my daughter's name is going to be Evangeline. And I held on to that. Wow. And she was born and I was like, she's Evangeline. Was she your just, husband at the time like, no, yeah, I he hate was, it? He was just like, he was whatever fine. you want to do. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, he was so supportive. Okay. Um, yeah. And she told me, she's like, oh, you know, why does daddy have a girlfriend? And, and not you. how come you don't have a boyfriend? And she had met the person that I was with before. But again, it was just not a good relationship at all. So after that, that's when I was like, I don't think I would ever introduce her to another person until I know for a fact that one, they are a good person. Mm-hmm. And two, they will be permanently in our lives because I don't want her to see me kind of in the dating zone like that. I just feel like she's too little and I don't want her to get confused. And plus, you know, her, uh, my ex-husband and his girlfriend, they've been together for about a year or so. And I like that. She sees stability and it's, mm-hmm. it's healthy. And just because we're not together, it doesn't mean we're not going to good, be good co-parents for her. And, and we have done a really good job at that and never seen her um or her never seen us fighting we're very cordial with each other um so yeah i just decided to take a step back from it and honestly with the company we're just so busy that there wouldn't even be the time you know yeah like, just non-stop work and coming to things like these and events and just this time that i've been by myself i feel like i've accomplished so much of what i wanted to do and it's so beautiful i mean you've been single too now for you said for a few years and it's like time. you don't have to ask anyone for permission you don't have to schedule around someone else's schedule you kind of like oh this is what i want to do tomorrow okay i'll do it i don't feel like doing this i'm just gonna stay home right all day. you're on your own time it's a freedom right and it's kind of being selfish and i i yeah. guess i'm very selfish with my time you know i and i use it as i need to but for the most part if i don't have to i will by all means stay home my pjs and watch marvel movies and i don't have nobody telling me anything or yeah mad at me and just having such a peace like such a peaceful environment do you feel like – do you go out – and you said you're so busy and whatnot. Do you do you go out and do you see men that you're interested in? And are you like, oh, man, I wish I was in that space? Or do you feel like, oh, that's a good-looking guy, but I'm so good right now. I don't – I'm not there. Yeah. The, the second. second one? Yeah. Really? <laughs> yeah. I just – I'm healing. And yeah. still, I feel like healing is going to take a long time. And I want it to take a long time. I want to take as long as I possibly can because oh I feel God, like sometimes... Good for you. You know, sometimes we rush, right? Like, no, go back into the dating scene or, mm-hmm. you know, no, you don't have to do it. But it's like, I am happy. I'm still very happy. But not only do I need to heal what I went through, but also like past traumas, you know, growing up, everything that we go through and especially like the way my family dynamic was and just leaving all those things behind and and truly starting over and like starting over as a brand new person and not taking anything to the heart not not hurting anymore letting go of all of that and it's wow. been so beautiful are you in therapy right now yes yeah yeah and it so helps important. a lot. It does. It does. And I think because there's still kind of like a taboo to it, especially in Hispanic families. Like, okay. oh, you know, like therapy is not good. Or Really? What know? is the taboo? Just talking to a stranger, like airing out your dirty laundry? Kind of. Even though it's a total stranger? And more of it being like psychologist, like I'm not crazy. I don't need to speak to someone. Oh. I'm not crazy. But it's okay. like it's not necessarily about being crazy. It's for your mental health. Kind of like you go to a dentist to get a teeth checkup. You know, you go to a therapist to get a mental health checkup. It's very therapeutic. It helps you. Yeah. It allows you to speak about things that maybe you didn't even know you were holding in. Things that once you talk about them, oh, you understand why I acted a certain way. What triggered this? Why did I say this? And why did I allow myself to be treated a certain way and grow from that? A hundred percent. I'm a big, I, I wanted to go to therapy my whole life. It's kind of interesting i do have a memory of a young age of me and my sisters and my mom going into a therapy office and never going back 
Um, you know what it's I mean? It's hard to go back when you first start. Well, I, yeah. we, I think it was like a family. I don't think I had control over it. But I remembered from that time I always wanted to go talk to a stranger. Like I really wanted to like have someone to talk to. But I, I don't even think I remembered – or I knew what I wanted to talk about. I just liked that that idea was there. Yeah. Um, and then just growing up being a teenager, obviously I, with health insurance and the way I grew up, it wasn't really – it was just too much to find one. It was very intimidating. And am I going to be qualified? And how much is it going to be? Can I afford it? All this stuff. And we didn't have things like – better help or those online oh um, my god better help is amazing yeah i yeah. did that at first um now i'm with somebody in like in person in person which i love um but would absolutely do it virtual if i needed and i think that's such a great resource but i shout that i go to therapy from the rooftops like if i leave my i go every thursday or every other thursday at, on my lunch from work and people will be like where are you headed to lunch i'm like nope to my therapy appointment you know, like I just am like kind of on the, I'm, um, it's like, it's so normal. It's so normal. Nope. I'm going to the doctor. Nope. I'm getting Botox. Nope. I'm going to my therapy appointment, <laughs> you know, like, and then even with dating, cause I am on apps sometimes, sometimes I not to take a break. They say, Oh, what did you do today? And I'll say, Oh, I worked and I had a therapy appointment and they're, and they're like physical therapy. And I say, no mental therapy. Someone has unmatched me before. Because like, of that? Yeah, and that's totally fine. I feel like that's such a great trait, though. You recognize that you may need help in some areas, mm-hmm. and you're getting the help. Like, why would that be a trigger? I have no idea, but if it's a trigger for you, you're not for me. So thank yeah. you so much for exiting stage yeah, left. Yeah, absolutely. So I um, I own it, and I, I think it's so important. So Yeah, I and I that's... love that. I love how confident you are about that. I need thank to get you. to that. I feel like I'm still very... Um, I guess uncomfortable speaking about a lot of my personal life. I'm so used to just talking about like my business and what I do for my yeah. business. And when I do talk about my personal life, I kind of go into a little show, like how much interesting. Should I give? Well, like, maybe that's the way that you were brought up. And maybe like you said, in Hispanic culture, it's kind of like keep things yeah. kind of to yourself a little bit. Yeah. I think mine came from an, un- an unhealthy way. I, um, I was very shy growing up, very weird. Like we were poor. We would have been good friends. <laughs> we would have been good friends. Yes. Yeah, and I I was I didn't have I think I always had personality, but I was always scared to show it. Yeah. And then I always talk you get about the weird girl. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I wanted to be noticed but like also not called out kind of thing. But I um I started working at this restaurant Wood Ranch when I was 15 and the manager at the time um told me and I was tall. And I was, uh, you know, I was so tall for my age the whole time. So I just felt like I stuck out already. Yeah. But he said to me, he's like, I was a host at a restaurant. And he's like, you need to, you need to speak up. You're funny. You're pretty. Like, keep, Aww. keep talking, like in a very friendly way, not a weird way. But yeah. like, s- speak up. You're the host. You're, you know, people want to hear you. You're funny. You're this, you're that. And he, ever since then, I was like, okay, I'm going to start. Because he would be like, you're weird. Like, he would make a joke. And I'd be like, hmm. Oh. I shudder a little bit. Like maybe I was scared I was going to get in trouble or something. Yeah. And so ever since then, I talk too much. I'm an oversharer, which cue a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oversharing is fun sometimes, though. It's fun sometimes. With the right person. Yeah. I do think when I first started dating out here in Houston, I was like, had to reel that in a little bit. Because <laughs> yeah, on a first date, I would be. Like, go, 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 go. You need to find a person who's just a good listener. Who's just okay with you oversharing, <laughs> and they would just sit there and look at you and laugh and love you, and they keep oversharing. Yeah, with me. look at me, laugh at me, and love me. Yes, exactly. Perfect. You don't I need to that. not overshare. You can overshare with the right. No, person. I definitely, and I do need somebody who is outgoing though too. Like you can be a little bit of a wallflower, but I'm gonna pull you out to the dance floor. I'm gonna pull you out oh. to you know. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be a little bit awake. <laughs> Um, okay, so I want to talk about um, first generation. You were the first graduate um, yes, through college for your family mm-hmm. as well, right? And you said psychology. Yes. Okay, what was that like? Um, Did you feel pressure to go to school? Actually, Did you want to? I wanted to. It was kind of quite the opposite because in the Hispanic families – you want to keep them close and tighten it. And they're very strict, right? It's that yeah. very much strict household of you can't go out. You need to call me for permission. What are you doing? How dare you be out with the boy and get shamed? Um, so breaking a lot of that and 
uncreating, like unlearning a lot of things. Um, but I wanted to go to college. I, I was always like in AP classes in high school and just okay. pushing myself to do extracurricular activities. I knew I wanted to go to college. Um, and my parents, I think, and I, now I understand them as a parent and as an adult. I mean, they were also learning and they were in a new country and they didn't know anything about this Doing country. the best they could. Doing the best they can. Yeah. Um, but at the time they were like, you can't go. And I, they were just afraid. They were, were you moving away or you just, I did. I went to Sam Houston Well, I went to San Jack, which is a community college first. And I got a scholarship to Sam Houston, Huntsville. Um, and that's where things kind of went even, um, rough because it it was like a battle of you can't go to college or why are you going there? And, And it was like, you know, come home every week. It was a lot. It was, it was, um, I think the first time that I truly entered a low, mode in my life because I didn't know how to handle that and I felt like such a bad daughter you know and as a first generation you want to make your parents proud but now you feel like you're doing the opposite it's like what do I do um so I came back to Houston after a semester and I got a scholarship here and I just I went into psychology and dance and then dancing has always kind of been my outlet okay um what kind of dance um like modern contemporary ballet wow I love it. That's that's really like the way I express myself. Sometimes I don't know how to express myself with words. So when I feel a lot, I just dance in my room. That's how you're expressing how you said like you kind of go into a shell when you talk about yourself personally, but yes. on the dance floor. Yes, I can You're letting it myself. all out. Oh, yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh, yeah. fun. <laughs> do you still do it? Yes. Like I, at classes? Not, no, not professionally. I, um, but do you go take classes? Or? I did this year. I started this year. You know, I stopped for five years. Okay. And then this year I went back to it because I realized how much I missed it. Um, and my body just kind of remembered. And your, your body, your muscles, they hold memory. So they, it just moves by itself. And it was, it was so great being on the dance floor again and and letting every emotion. That's another form of therapy right there. It, it really was. Yeah, and it still is. I just, I haven't gotten to it this year again. I probably will by next year. Yeah, you just gotta, I, you're busy. Yeah, that's another one. You gotta make time for, <laughs> the com- time for what you need. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so I went to college, often working two jobs with the scholarship, always being a bartender and mm-hmm. then in sales. So okay. either in like AT&T and Verizon. And I'm always so competitive, too. So I was like always trying to be like the number one spot in AT&T and who sells the most. And I was always in the top three. And oh, it, was, okay. it was pretty cool because it was always like two guys and then myself. Yeah. And it was like I was always the one girl who's like, no, I can do it. I can beat the man. I can do this. I can do this. And And I did. And then I graduated and got married basically right after graduation and had my daughter. Wow. So it's been an interesting ride for sure. What made you um, give, I don't know, say give up psychology, but what made you make that switch? Um, You know, I went into teaching. Oh, and right. I went into teach. I was a high school teacher, a senior high school teacher. Ooh, that's why it was exhausting. I, one year. That's what I'm telling you. I praise teachers so much because I could only do it one year. So when I hear teachers say like 10 years, 15 years, I'm like, I don't know how you do it. Like you are an amazing human being with a yeah. good heart because I couldn't do that. So I did it one year with seniors. I did. I I used to call them my kids, and like I loved my kids. They were. It was a yeah. Title One school, mainly Hispanic students, and I would Aww. always like, if you don't go to college, you have to go to a school where you can at least get a certificate, get in a welding, get in a mechanic, do this, do that. Yeah. It's like you have to do something. Like you cannot give up. You have done so much to not give up. So I love that aspect of it. Um, but I just realized teaching wasn't for me, and so I went into real estate, which is something I had been wanting to do, and. That just, I really merged it a lot with my psychology background. <clears throat> and now, I guess I can announce it here. You're the first to know and oh. the first for people to know. I'm going back for my master's in business administration and finance. Oh my gosh, <laughs> good for you. Thank you. It's the first time I say it. Ah! <laughs> Were you waiting to like, it was for sure, for sure? Because if you talk about it, like, yeah, you're scared. Maybe you'll put it off or something. And then it doesn't happen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh my god! But you're like enrolled. You're going. Yeah. So I congratulations. My, thank you. That's huge. I'm so excited for that. It's something that I have. I told myself I was going to do before I turned 30, and I didn't. And then I realized, why do I keep telling myself? Like, why do I keep putting timelines for myself? Like, I it just just do it, Miriam. Do it at your own time, at your own pace. 
So I'm like, you know what? Before I'm 40. So I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to take slow courses just to make sure. But you've already I'm... got a full-time business and job and daughter <laughs> and life. So yeah, just go at your own pace. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Just take it slow as long as I can get it done. That's all that matters now. Wow. Good for you. Thank you. I cannot imagine going back to school. <laughs> gonna be hard I'm like, i mean I'm but i kid i'm like thinking i'm like oh kid now <laughs> i haven't been to school since i was 19 i'm 33 what is math what, what? is math <laughs> you're like i know what one plus one is now we know like girl math i can do that i love girl math <laughs> i love it. it's like if i spend cash i didn't spend anything girl math and it's like man that is so true yes like universal yeah i just got um by the way i don't know if you can tell or maybe you saw my instagram story but i just got my filler (laughs) this is random and off topic filler um dissolved from my lips and so they're really bruised but i put on a lot of lipstick so maybe you can't tell but anyway i I paid for it this money has been collecting and so it's actually free (laughs) girl man (laughs) i'm saving money here i just got botox and filler Mm -hmm. dissolved for free what made you want to get them dissolved I was getting bumped, like a little bit of bumps. Actually, I've had bumps since I first got filler, but it hasn't been that noticeable. But I keep putting more filler in. And I go very naturally. They're actually swollen right now, so they look very big. But you have lovely lips, and I doubt you have an ounce of filler in there. No, I don't have filler somewhere. Yeah, no, I no, can oh, tell. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I do have Botox, though. I have Botox here and here. Well, it's wearing off. I actually need to go back for a touch-up. So It's Vanessa, so expensive. This, I know, yes. It's so expensive. It is. So anyway, that's why I got it dissolved because I was getting a little bumpies and then it was starting to migrate. You just have to go over, like, appointments. It's yeah. hair. I just know? got paid. I just paid to take it out of my lips and then I'm going to pay to put it back in. Are you? Yeah. <laughs> But I have no top lip. Like before filler, I have no top lip. Well, your lips look really like if you hadn't told me that you had They're fillers, swollen. I wouldn't have known because they look really natural to your like face structure. Yeah, well, that's good. But yep, yeah, it was a terrible life that I lived with no top lip. <laughs> was it much smaller than you have now? Yes. Like if I smiled, you couldn't see my top lip. I'll show you a photo after. Yeah, I was, gonna ask you that. <laughs> I was like, I need to see it. I will show you a photo. No top lip. So I love it, and I go pretty natural, which, you know, is what I prefer. But, um, yeah, so I just – anyway, do girl little math. things. I mean, I think little things, little things, but I have a nose job. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't like my nose before. I did it, it looks pretty natural. Um, I mean, it looks very natural. I wouldn't – yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think a lot of people know. I never talk about it. It was just, just for aesthetic reasons or um, – yeah. What is a lot of, they have what, a deviated septum? No, it? no, okay. no, it was for aesthetic reasons. Good I just didn't like my nose. Good for you. I'm but... about to get chin liposuction. Yay, okay, there you go. <laughs> One of my friends got like the chin, the cheeks. She got um, like kind of like the fatty tissue here and her arms and like just a mommy makeover, like her breast. She went to Mexico for it and she looks fabulous and so, so natural. Like she looks like you would have never known, but she made a whole I am all for it. it. But I am a little scared that you just said okay. to Mexico. <laughs> yeah, but like obviously not because of Mexico, but I did just see this woman. Did you see the woman who woke up? She went for um, she had been to this doctor before. She was getting like skin tightening or something, but she woke up with breast implants and a BBL. And this woman's like 60 years old. So is that not what she asked for? No, she was going for skin tightening <gasps> surgery and she woke up with boobs and a butt. Wait, how did they do that? Though? I don't like, know. What was the consent on that? I don't know. And did she pay for it? <laughs> yeah, I, think, I don't know. <laughs> I need to know. I need I have questions. But you do hear horror stories of people going oh to Mexico God. for like dental work, cheap dental work or oh, yeah, cheap no, body I stuff. Would never. Why? Why the de- why not dental but you are okay with Yeah, you know what? You're right. That's complete hypocrisy. <laughs> <laughs> well maybe it's You're just absolutely <laughs> right no i was like what do you know <laughs> but I, I guess because i hear a lot of horror stories with dental um my biggest concern but again now that i think about it it's very hypocritical because uh it's like when they put you to sleep they can just like take out maybe things and <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, you get put to sleep when you get a nose drop too. So, but you know what? I won't say like the thing about it just has to be a reputable company. I trust so much Mexico doctors though more than I do doctors here. Well, it's it, it's not yeah. about that's the thing. It's not about Mexico. It's just like you get what you pay for kind of thing. So it's like don't go to like some deep dungeon. Oh yeah, no, 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 no surgery no. place and like 
no, expect a great I went job. To, like a really great Monterrey surgeon, and he did amazing. Like he was so sweet and checked up, and he would call me like as my progress was. And here in the U.S., and he was just like, "I want to see photos, send it to me," and it was just amazing. A great experience. I reckon it, recommend him. Okay, and so that that was in Mexico. Why that do you was, why do you trust Mexico Mexican doctors more than American when it doctors comes to specifically? Healthcare, um, because they don't really gain a lot of like insurances and okay. and getting money off of you for like being sick. And I feel like doctors here do is very like, well, what's your health insurance? Mm-hmm. It's the very first thing instead of like, what are your symptoms and what's your health insurance? Um, and to me, that's automatic. A lot of like, well, I know you just want the money, and you know, I'm just. <sighs> I kind of go into those conspiracy theories a lot, too. Of, okay. Of, like, the way the healthcare system works here. Oh, it's so jacked. And kind of, like, trailing you along and giving you medicines instead of actually getting to the deep-rooted problem of your health. Um, it's, here, take another pill. Here's another medicine mm. that can make you temporarily feel better, and then you're going to come back. In Mexico, it's more of like, oh, this is going to heal you. And it does. Like, their medicine is so great. I want to talk about your celibacy. Okay. I guess going back to the celibacy was that, you know, get it out of getting out of a relationship that was just not good for me. And everyone told me that, you know, my family, my friends, and it was it's so hard. You never think you're gonna be that woman. Mm. You 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 look at relation like, oh, why doesn't she just leave? That could never be me. And right. then, and then you're that person and you're like, How? And you can't get out of it and it's so dark and scary and I think at the time I was about 98 pounds I was so underweight I was anxious I was just going through a lot and finally one day I I saw too many things and went through too many things that day that I was I just knew I had to get out because it it got to that point where I had to for myself and for my daughter wow um so I decided you know what I don't need a man to do what I need to do I've been doing everything by myself and I don't feel comfortable with a man touching me right now Mm -hmm. um so I decided to just stay celibate and not date and not be romantically involved with anyone in any way and it's been really I'm telling you I told myself a year and it's like wow seven months like you don't you don't feel it um and it just it, it's just a, such a process that it, it's going on. It's happening so fast, to, like slow, but fast at the same time. Yeah. That now that the year's coming up, I think I'm like, I think another year would help too. I mean, who knows, wow. right? If I meet someone, you just never know. I'm not going to completely cut myself off. I think I deserve better than that than to let someone stop me from ever finding love. Because of course. Of that. Yeah. But if it happens, it happens. But if not, I'm also okay with it. Like I've made peace with it. I, I like my solitude. I like my alone space. I like coming home and knowing that I can just be at peace and just watch TV if I want to or read a book or go to sleep and just just really be at peace. That's the biggest thing. I am learning to be more at peace. So I'm, I, I don't know, I've not like um, declared celibacy, but I haven't had <laughs> sex in a long time. <laughs> Good for you. Um, yeah, it's so empowering though, isn't it? It is, choose. it is especially because my previous um, interactions with sex have come from what I'm discovering through therapy, um, a lonely place. And I wanted to feel in charge and mm-hmm. in control. And that's how I got affection. So I was having sex with people because I wanted to. Badly. I do yeah. love sex. <laughs> But I wanted that feeling of, like, I had him. I got him. That was, I don't know, that, like, exhilarating feeling. Um, And so I've stopped doing that. And so I told myself I can't have sex with anybody until I'm dating them, which that there's no timeline there. That could be just when I know that somebody Mm -hmm. is, um, if we're really interested in each other. Again, that could be. The second date, that could be the fourth date, that could be the tenth yeah. date. It's just so weird nowadays, isn't it? It, it was not – I I was not waiting for any sort of date. It was just <laughs> whenever the hell I wanted, I was having sex with yeah. the person I was talking to or I would have people on my roster. You know what I mean? But like 
And that has been hard because there are people available and I am tempted <laughs> a lot of the time. Like, I'm staying you're strong. For me. <laughs> I'm staying strong. But yeah, it's... But you're so much stronger for it, you know, because you... I've learned a lot about myself. Yeah. And it's it's that is transitioning over into the therapy learning, you know what I mean? Not that, like, she checks in with me, but I haven't had to go in and be like, oh, I had meaningless sex and I yeah. felt like shit afterwards. That's the thing, right? Like, you feel bad the next day. Yeah. I started to feel bad and I never did before. And when I start, was starting to feel bad, then I knew that I was going... I was had a problem, <laughs> and I needed to fix it. And you did though. Yeah, you took the I did. To do it, and it's a work in progress. And so I tell myself, and I've told my girlfriends, like if I slip up, like I'm not gonna be so mad at myself no, for it. You can't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you're still human. Yeah, you're still human. And if it happens, like if I were to slip up, I think now I can be nicer to myself. Like you know what, Miriam, you had a slip up. Like that's fine. Yeah, like, you don't. You don't have to be so hard on yourself. And I realized that, like, why are we so hard on ourselves? So hard on ourselves. Why do we, like, punish almost ourselves for making mistakes? Like, we're not perfect. We're humans. We're learning, too. And, like, 30 years old is, like, still young in this earth. Like, the earth is millions of years old. And we're just 30 years of it. Like, how much time is that really enough to learn and not make mistakes and figure out what life is it's so small it's not enough time mm-hmm. no, <laughs> yeah i'm getting better so at that too on ourselves i'm getting a lot better at that too do you do like um daily affirmations or anything like that no i don't either i try <laughs> i try i I, um, i've been trying to get better at doing daily prayers okay I, mean, I would i wish i could say i do them every day but i don't i don't there's times where you know you do feel down and you're like I don't, I don't even want to, you know, sometimes I just want to be cooped up in bed and like, no, Miriam, just go out and focus on work and do what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And then when I feel like it's a lot, then I'm like, okay, Miriam, you need to pray now because mm. you can, you start feeling, you know, that feeling you're like, you just feel anxious or you yeah. feel like you're, you're kind of unsure of what's your, what's going on around you and who's around you and and who is on your corner and trying to figure out all of that yeah you kind of feel like in a swirly machine yeah Yeah, (laughs) or that's how i feel sometimes if you're not your own hype woman yeah who do i have i had um oh gosh the naked gal on my podcast maybe a couple months ago and she said that she's like you can't expect somebody to work hard for you or hype you up if you don't work hard or hype yourself yeah i I mean in business world in life friendships and everything romantic excuse me romantic wise like i can't expect to have a supportive amazing partner if i'm not amazing and supportive to myself no i agree they're gonna treat you the way you're allowed to be treated and the way that you feel like you deserve to be treated Mm -hmm. so i'm on you're ahead of me (laughs) Not that it's a competition, no, but but you are like ahead it. of me, and and I'm gonna yeah. I I mean I I am on that that trend. We're trending. We're doing upward. it together. We're doing it together. Cheers. There's room for Cheers. us all. Yes. Go women. <laughs> okay, what is your wine of the week? Oh, I have a good one, and I know every parent out there is gonna relate to me. Okay, it's this damn kids getting sick. This entire fall is just nonstop. They go to school and they're sick. And then honestly, they're always sick. It, but it's like, it's and then the you weather. get sick and then we get sick and then we get better. And now they're sick again. And it's like, I saw this meme. It was like putting out my fall decorations. It was like Tylenol and Vicks. <laughs> and it was like, isn't that the truth? Oh, that's oh, funny. Yes. So it's just the kids yeah. love them. Yes, absolutely. I would die for my daughter. I would fight for my daughter but those kids getting sick but you don't want to take the call for your daughter (laughs) no so many germs all the time do you think that we're experiencing a little bit of um i think that germ like if i i don't want to i don't want to assume where i would be if i had kids but like i if something drops on the floor eat it like give give your body that germ kind of thing to like make you stronger make better. you stronger do you feel like right now we're in a little bit of a time where we were like cooped up for a while from the pandemic i think so and people are st- i don't know i like just scared. feel like everyone's yeah. getting sick 
Yeah, like the germs. Like the we're cold not, and we're the flu. We're not as resilient as anymore. Yes. It may be. And you know what? Because then we started doing sanitizers, which is great, though. Like, I do think right. we needed to do that a long time 100%. ago. 100%. And people COVID. were not washing their hands after they went to the restroom. What was going on That's around gross. here? Yeah. No, I agree. <laughs> I was so gross. And it's like, you need signs to tell people to that wash their hands. That is wild. It's like, why do How you many times someone? are you in the bathroom at work or in life, like out at a bar or a restaurant or something? And I'm like still – someone comes in the bathroom. I'm peeing, using the restroom. They leave and they don't turn on the sink. I want to run after them. You're like, here, take some soap. <laughs> like I don't care if you're using hand sanitizer. What about the sink? Yeah. No. It's just <laughs> – oh, but – you know what, with kids, I think I had that mentality too, like, oh, they'll be fine. I do think COVID scared everyone a little bit, like, oh, germs, yeah. germs. But, and now I am, I'm not going to lie, I'm like that. I'm like, don't put that in your mouth. Wash okay. your hands after this. Have you? But you know what, my daughter's also really like, she'll touch everything and then she'll start biting her nails. Okay. So I know. No, I think there's certainly some, sick. yeah, I think there's certainly some lines. Um, I'm more thinking yeah. about like when you're like a baby and like your pacifier drops on the ground, it's like. Oh, I don't know. Like, stick it back in. Like, would you? Maybe I've just always been that mom. You know what? Oh, I'd stick it back it's in. Just me. Put it in your mouth. It's fine. It'll be fine. Too. Take it. <laughs> okay, no. but no, I get it. And honestly, the allergies and the weather right now. Yeah, it doesn't help. I did not have allergies before I moved to Houston, but I had allergies so bad two weeks ago. I had to go get Zyrtec D. I could not breathe, and like my throat hurt a little bit, but I wasn't. I felt zero sickness. I knew it was just the weather and the allergies. It was like 30 degrees one day and like 90 degrees the next. Yeah. How are we supposed to function? Mm-mm. So can't. in LA, it's not really like that. No. I mean. No. <laughs> not back and forth like that. Oh, do you miss the weather there? No. No. Because I'm not from the beach, though. I'm from okay. like desert. So it's dry. Oh. Okay. It's still hot AF. Dry. Oh. But not humid. I'll never get used to the summer here, though. No. But every single time I go back to LA, I am scaly dry. I think because my body's used to. Like the humidity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway. Yeah. That's a good wine. (laughs) Thing. And yeah, that does affect the parents and the workplaces and stuff. Yeah, because now we got to get off work because we got to stay and watch the kids. But you know what? I do like that is one thing that I do like that came out of the pandemic was people finally or I guess I'll speak for myself. I felt finally okay for saying, like, I'm sick. I'm not going to come into work today. Yeah. Whereas before, it was looked really bad upon if you were sick. It it was. And now people are like, oh, yeah, I don't want to get sick. Stay home. It's like, that should have been this. Should have always been the case. Mm -hmm. What were we doing? And the remote from work. Like, a lot of people being able to work from home. It's nice. Love that. Love that. That's Mm -hmm. me. I'm on a hybrid schedule. (laughs) My day job. Oh, I like that. Yeah. So you get to do both. Yeah, I do like it because I like being social and annoying everyone in my office. <laughs> Where do you work at? Um, it's a research organization. I'm in sales too, over the phone. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. You know, you completely understand. <laughs> I do, um, I do. Miriam, thank you so much for coming on the pod and letting us get to know you and sharing some of your story. Where can we find you? Thank you. And you can find me on Instagram, okay. Medium La Realtor, Facebook, LinkedIn, TikTok, um, and our website, alumbraproperties.com. Oh my gosh, how cool. TikTok. Are you dancing on TikTok? No. You know what I did though? I started dancing and then I switched to just real estate. Well, you could because you have a dance background. Yes. Yes. But uh, you know what? It's just so different now. It's different. I know, like, oh, my boss is over there dancing on TikTok. <laughs> I'm like, oops. It's the way of the world. I know. It's, yeah. I mean, you're right, though. It's this. If you so wanted different. to, you could. I do. Yeah. I do want to. <laughs> <laughs> do it. I'll be your first like. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see okay. That. For now, though, you are going to continue being an amazing mom, an amazing boss, and going back to school for your master's. Congratulations again. Thank you. You're welcome. We'll do one final cheers. Cheers. Thank you again. Uh, Winers, um, what's my Instagram? Page underscore Crutcher at Adult Dish Wine. <laughs> um, if you get a second, I would love a review, please, on Spotify or Apple, adultishwines.com for merch, and you can always watch the episodes on YouTube. Love you guys. See you next Thursday. Bye. Bye. <laughs>